Hello, welcome to the Good Life Podcast. I'm Matt Carpenter. I hope you are having a good Ash Wednesday. Today is the beginning of Lent, February 22nd, 2023. It's a day for a lot of people that can cause some pull within, back and forth. If you're reformed, that there's there's a debate that's gone on for a long time over whether or not Reformed churches should recognize Ash Wednesday and the season of Lent in general. That's not the purpose of this podcast. If that's a, if you have a conviction that we should not participate in that, that's fine. But I want to talk about some of the meaning of the season, beginning with this particular day, uh, Ash Wednesday. It, it's not always been marked by the actual placing of ashes on people's foreheads that that that's become more popular in recent times and we have to be careful not to simply play act with what we think are traditions that are actually very recent innovations and well the the placing ashes on the forehead is not a recent innovation. It's not something that we see practiced or we have much reference of that I know of practiced in the early church. But the practice of Lent and the beginning today of Ash Wednesday goes does go back uh, a pretty good ways. It marks the 40 days prior to Easter. And those 40 days are when Jesus began to fo- to focus and concentrate his ministry on his impending crucifixion. You can read in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he was predicting that this was going to happen, and his disciples didn't fully get it. Once they did get it, it was a very great disappointment to them. But you can see an intensification of his language of some of his rhetoric when he's discussing, and I say that word purposefully, the words that he uses, his the art of communication becomes more pointed towards the religious leaders, the, the hypocrites who were leading God's people astray. But it also marks the 40 days. It's a, it's a way of, of enacting in a sense, the 40 days in the wilderness when Jesus went early in his ministry after his baptism and he was tempted at the end of that period by the devil. For many Christians, this is a time when they emphasize repentance. We know, of course, that the the necessity of repentance, repentance is commanded throughout Scripture when we turn from the sin that we have committed towards life. But repentance also is something of a change in our lifestyle. It's not just, oh, I've been doing these things and I I ought to stop. It means I'm called to turn my life towards Christ. And the way we do that is often not just I have a comfortable life. I'm going to continue a comfortable life and doing most of the things I want to, just not quite as many of them. But instead, it means I've got I'm called to give of myself. Now, this is a place where we often are not comfortable because it's in the realm of the disciplines. Spiritual disciplines have a bad rap among some. We know the extremes, you know, extreme asceticism. We think of those like desert monks who acted in a way that is, well, that's just much further than than Scripture even calls us to act. But we think, therefore, that's not something I should do. But the disciplines are a way, and, and even particular disciplines and this is where Lent comes in, the discipline of fasting is one of those. Jesus fasted in the wilderness, we read, for those 40 days. 
And the discipline of fasting was to turn one's heart to God. Fasting is not something we're accustomed to. And again, it's easy to, to take this and see it as an end in itself. And that's where we go wrong. If we see fasting and any other discipline, any, any type of especially ascetic practice as something we do just because I, I'm going to prove my, my, my strength, my virtue, my masculinity or femininity, I, I'm going to prove that I love God by doing this. That's not what it's about. The Book of Common Prayer, in the 1662 Book of Common Prayer, prescribes an Old Testament and New Testament reading for all the important days of the church calendar. And on Ash Wednesday, the prescribed reading is from Isaiah 58. So I'm going to read Isaiah 58. This passage is is about fasting, and it will help us, I think, to think about this in, in, in an appropriate way. The prophet says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They asked of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our souls, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate to smite with a fist of wickedness, you shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Now I'm going to stop here just for a second because this is an important point. When someone, when we do something, some type of discipline and someone sees it and they don't practice it, they don't agree with it the way that we do, we think, well, I've got to prove this. I must vindicate my, myself. I've got to prove that I am right. Well, Isaiah's point is we don't fast, and this is God speaking through Isaiah, we, we don't fast so that we can prove our righteousness. We don't fast so that we can show other people that we're doing the right thing. That's the wrong purpose. Picking back up in verse 5, is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? It is to bow down his head as a bulrush and spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out of thy houses, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Then shalt thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward or your, your rear guard is what that means. Thou shalt call, and the Lord shall answer, and thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and the spreading of vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul of the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. The Lord shall guide thee continually. And satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build up the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. So this reading is, is an expression of the purpose behind fasting. So if you do choose to fast from, from whatever the, the, the item is, you should be sure that your purpose is to see and to grow more like your Father. It's to give yourself more to God's kingdom. The purpose of the disciplines, the purpose of disciplining our bodily desires is because we want to, to loose the bands of wickedness. We want to undo the burdens that are upon us. We want to grow. We want to grow in the freedom promised in Christ. That's the point behind 
fasting. And Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6 that our fasting should be especially in, in secret. It should not be something we publicly show. And, and he, this is from Isaiah, as many of the, the elements of the Sermon on the Mount are taken from the prophet Isaiah. So our fasting, our, our work should be in secret, and it should be for the purpose of growing in grace, not that we can prove to ourselves or to other people that we are spiritual. The discipline is a gift. It's a gift that, we're, that we should, when necessary and in the right way, pursue, but it's not, again, the end. It's, the discipline itself is not the point. The point is growing more like Christ. Jesus went into the wilderness, but he didn't stay there. The purpose of fasting is not, and the purpose of the disciplines are not for us to go away, to hide ourselves, but rather to grow in strength, in spiritual strength, so that we may return, as Jesus did, in the power of the Holy Spirit. So we trust when, when we deprive ourselves of some physical pleasure and, and delight, we, we, we part with that gift temporarily that we may receive the greater gifts that he has prepared for us. Ash Wednesday and Lent also, though, is a reminder that death comes. There's no way we will escape death. Death comes for every man, woman. Jesus, the very Son of God, the, the incarnate one, the Word made flesh, died. His flesh was killed. And it reminds us that we too one day will die because it is only through death that his resurrection could come. And that resurrection is a gift to us. So therefore, it's only through one day when we die that we can also enjoy the final resurrection promised to us. So the season of Lent is one where we give of ourselves. We remember what he has done for us. We give of ourselves we part with, with pleasures so that we may pursue righteousness with greater joy and strength. And we remember, as we at times will struggle, that death is coming. But it's not the end. Lent culminates in Good Friday, the resurrection of Christ, and then ends on the last day. That is Easter. It begins, the last day is actually the Saturday before, but, but then Easter, the resurrection comes and ushers in a new beginning. I hope you all have a great rest of your week. May the Lord bless you. And if you're, and if you're recognizing Lent and participating in Lent, do so with a heart to grow, not to make this your display of righteousness.